So if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I'm a big proponent of any kind of earth building material, not just cob. And there's a whole variety of other earth building materials. So I want to go over some of those main ones with you here in this video. So the first one is called rammed earth. And basically what rammed earth is, is loose soil and aggregate like sand put into a form much like a concrete form where you would pour cement uh, concrete into. So you have a form on either side of the wall. You pour the soil and aggregate mix into the form and then you compact it down and ram it in there. Uh, traditionally you'd use a, a hand tamper which are still commonly used but today you can also get a pneumatic tamper which will speed up the process considerably. So you're basically just compacting that soil and aggregate into this form. Just, it's almost like creating sandstone because you're compacting it so much. And you remove the forms and you have a solid wall. And it's like stone almost. Um, very similar to cob, of course. Same, in, same ingredients essentially. But there's very little moisture even added to this. And it's just the soil and aggregate compacted and it's, it creates these amazing walls. So uh, this is an, a very old building method. And if you look at the Great Wall of China, much of the Great Wall of China was built with rammed earth, especially in the western portions where the climate is more arid and like desert. They didn't have as many stones or whatever else material, other materials they needed. So they just took the soil put it in these forms and created rammed earth walls. So you'll see rammed earth also a lot in Europe. Uh, they used it, had a big comeback in the early 1900s actually, especially in France and Germany. You'll see uh, beautiful rammed earth buildings. You wouldn't even know they were rammed earth because they just look very normal, uh, very, very nice buildings, but they don't stand out as earth buildings unless you look underneath the finishing, then you can tell that it's rammed earth. Um, so there's lots of examples in Europe and even more modern are examples in the American Southwest. There's a lot of rammed earth buildings going up there. And also if you look in Australia, there's a lot of really nice modern rammed earth buildings going up in Australia. So that's another thing. If you're really going for a modern look with earth materials, I would definitely look at rammed earth because you really get these nice, sleek, flat walls, uh, really nice 90 degree angles. If that's what you're going for, rammed earth is really a great option. So the next material is adobe, also sometimes known as mud brick. So adobe is probably the most ancient form of earth building, thousands and thousands, thousands of years old. Um, there's examples in uh, Jericho, uh, almost 10,000 years old. So we're looking at very ancient here. Um, and it's still used up to this day, especially in the Middle East, but also other parts of the world as well. And you can build pretty much any type of building with mud brick or adobe. Uh, any, uh, any style, very... Um, wide range of climates available for this material. Um, going back to rammed earth as well. Rammed earth is also suitable for many climates, just like adobe and cob. And I'll mention this here with all these materials, you get that thermal mass property, the same as cob, the low insulation, but the high thermal mass. So the same similar properties as cob, just um, the same, ingredients but used differently with a different building method. So I'll get back to Adobe here. Um, if you look at ancient Egypt, many of the ancient buildings in Egypt were built with Adobe mud brick and they're still standing today. And little more towards the present time, um, still hundreds of years old. You look to Yemen, there's a city called Shibam the whole city is made out of mud brick and these buildings range from 5 to 11 stories tall. And they call them skyscrapers, but to our standards, 
they're not really skyscrapers, but it really shows the potential for this material. I mean, you can still go pretty high if you design it that way. And then, um, of course, there's several examples of Adobe in the American Southwest. Um, a lot of the Spanish um, influences that went through there um, took Adobe through that region. So that, that's still um, prevalent in that area, uh, the Southwest all the way to through California. And the next material here is called Waddle and Daub. And this material is built with a lattice work. Now this lattice work, it's like a, a web. Just a basic lattice. And what you do is you have, this is called the wattle, and then the daub is much like cob, maybe a little more wet. So you take the daub and you pack it onto the wattle and it dries and you have a wall. So the main difference here with this material and most other earthen materials is the wattle and daub walls are much thinner and you don't get the same thermal mass properties this way because the walls are just too thin in most cases. So I recommend if you do wattle and daub to use it as interior walls or in a special case if you're doing a timber frame building to use the wattle and daub in between the timbers. And you'll see this a lot in old European buildings, especially in Germany and France. The timber frame buildings would have um, the wattle and daub in between the timbers. So uh, I, don't, I don't recommend doing a whole structure out of wattle and daub unless it's for some kind of uh, utility building, but not, not really for a home. Just do it for interior walls. That's my recommendation anyway. So the next material is called earth bag, also known as super adobe. This is the patented um, name created by architect Nader Khalili. And he has, well, he's passed away now, but his, his school is called Cal Earth. It's out in California. You can go there and learn this technique. But um, the earth bag and super adobe is based off of the adobe mud brick method, but it's a little bit more accessible because you don't have to actually create the adobe bricks and do the traditional method of drying them in the sun. Um, you're basically taking the polypropylene plastic bags, you're filling them with the soil and aggregate, and these bags solidify as, as they dry and basically you have a brick there. So it's, a, it's basically the same kind of method as Adobe, just using the bags instead of creating the bricks. And what is really nice about the Super Adobe is that it makes it easier to form domes. So you can do domes with Super Adobe earth bag technique and you can also do vaults. So vaulted ceilings, dome ceilings, which you can do a lot of creative things with. Now you can do that with the Adobe bricks, but it's just a little more of an art, a little more technical, not quite as easy for the do-it-yourself builder. So that's why I do recommend the Earth Bag Super Adobe if you want to do vaults or domes. So these are probably some of the most prevalent earth building techniques apart from cob and check them out. You know, just see, research what you can do with each one, their advantages, their disadvantages, and see how you could combine them with the cob. So you may have one wall built with cob. You may have one wall built with rammed earth. You could combine them all with different styles that you want. You may put a dome on top or a vault. So it's all up to you and you can just create the type of home that you desire.